Hello everyone, this is Matt. I'm going to be showing you through the new features of Easy Clones 2.0. So I'm just going to quickly get started. I've got a shape layer here, and you can see Easy Clones is docked down here. The panel itself, there's been an update. I've added some extra buttons here, but I'll run you through that later on. So first of all, I'm just going to create a clone system using the first button. And we'll just call this demo. Um, I'm going to center it to its controller and click OK. So like before, you'll see it's created our clone control layer and it's renamed our clone. And I'm just going to start running you through some of the new features. So I'm just going to quickly create some shapes. So if we go to the Easy Clones effect here, you will see we've now got delay, spacing, position modifiers, scale modifiers, rotation modifiers, opacity, and because I chose three random colors, I got all these checkboxes and slider controls here made. Um, so I'm gonna run you through the biggest feature, which is spacing. So we're just gonna to toggle this down here. And you'll see we get some checkboxes and sliders here. So throughout all of Easy Clones now, you have to enable features. This is to keep the code running smoother. So if you're not using a feature, it won't be calculated, so it'll make it quicker to render, uh, saving you your precious time. So I'm just gonna quickly enable the spacing. And here you'll see we've got X spacing and Y spacing. So if I start to slide this up, you'll see what this does. So I've got a 600 here. So when I put 600 on X, you'll see it spreads them out. And if I do the same on Y, you'll see we now get a line, a diagonal line, sorry. And if I was to change this to minus, you'll see it's gone in a different way. And if I was to put X back to zero, you'll see we'll get just a spacing on the Y axis. So that's basically how the spacing works. Uh, if I just dial these back in again. And we have this line slash grid here now. So what you'll see is if I start to transition this, our shapes begin to move from line spacing to grid spacing. And then here you'll see we've got rows and columns. So here if I change this to three and two, you'll see we now have three rows and two columns. And if I update our clone layers, you'll see now these two are kind of off center because we need to update the amount of rows. So if I add in another row, you'll see it it's now pushes everything up into the right position. Um, and we can adjust our spacing so we can see everything nicely. So if I go to 250 on each of these, we'll get a nice grid like so. So spacing enables you to just switch from grids and line spacing really quickly and easily. But you can also use this as a foundation block to then add the modifiers. So you also notice that we have a checkbox for delay spacing. If I turn this on, we're also going to need to actually turn on delay so if we come to the drop down for delay here, you'll see enable delay isn't checked. So if we turn on the delay settings as well, we will see delay spacing begins to work. And we'll just quickly crank this up to five so we can see it a bit better. So what you'll see here is now based on their index, which is at the end here. So one, two, three, four, five, the clones begin to be delayed as they move through the animation. And you'll see here we've got controllers for reverse delay and even delay. So if I select reverse delay, you'll see how this updates our animation. So now clone eight will begin to move first and so on, so seven, six, five. And our last clone to move will be clone one. So if I reselect that you'll see clone one is now moving first and eight will be last if we select even delay this time you'll see 
just going to quickly reverse our animation. This time you'll see 1 and 8 here will begin to move first to the center, followed by 7 and 2, like so, and 6 and 3, and so on. And we have reverse delay again. If we select this, you'll notice the middle clones begin to move first and end in with 8 and 1, like so. And this applies to when we select the delay space in here, it also applies to if we animate the line and grid transition. So if I just quickly animate this property, so we're currently in grid mode, and if we were to go back to zero, which is line mode, you'll see the clones are delayed whilst moving back to their position in the line formation, like so. Okay, so I'm now gonna show you how the modifiers work. So if we come over to position modifiers and we hit the drop down arrow, you'll see now we've got delay position keyframes, modifiers, and wiggle. And if we open up the modifiers tab, you'll see we now have an enable button and delay position modifiers. So like the spacing, until we enable this checkbox, anything we put into these sliders here will not be taken into effect. So I'm just gonna quickly turn this on and now you'll instantly see our shapes have begin to move on their X axis. And again, we could go through the seeds and adjust the random assigned to the shape layers. And here we can do the same for Y and if we make our layers 3D, we can use Z as well. Like so. And you'll see here we've got the delay position modifiers. If I turn this on, and if we begin to just plot some keyframes, I'm just going to zero all these out. Oh, I've put keyframes at the end here. Didn't mean to do that. So now you'll see we start from our base position, which is because I have spacing enabled, like in the last demo, you'll see they then begin to animate to their random position based on our delay of five frames. And if I was to uncheck this, you'll see they all move at the same time because delay is not in the system. So we'll turn it on. And then if I was to turn this off, you'll see again, they'll spring back because the position modifiers are no longer enabled. So like I mentioned before, you can disable features you don't want to use throughout the system and it should make your animations quicker to preview and quicker to render. Uh, you'll see here we have delay position keyframes. This is a new feature. Previously, if you were to have put keyframes on the actual layers themselves, they wouldn't be included in any of the delay. So if I just quickly do this, so you'll see these just move all at the same time. So previously you would have had to have nudged the keyframes over, for example, like this, to get a staggering delay effect, which I was never happy with. So if we undo that, I'll show you now, if we select this checkbox, you'll see even though our keyframes are all in line, they begin to be activated by the delay like so and this works exactly the same for scale you'll see here we have modifiers wiggles and um, rotation and opacity so these all are identical except on scale you have the option for consistent stroke width so if I was to select this 
and then if we enable the modifiers and we adjust our scale like so oh I did the seed on that one and we can vary through these like so on the seed I'll just set that back to zero you'll see the stroke width is maintained and if I unselect this you'll see our lines get thicker or thinner so that just gives you instant ability to control stroke widths which is a nice little feature the other feature you'll see with scale is uniform scale by default this is ticked but if you unselect this you'll see now that the modifiers are added to the X and Y values individually so you get elongated shapes like so which doesn't particularly work well with outline shapes if you had fills so I'll just quickly add some fills you'll see you get better looking results like so which can be useful but for the majority of the time I recommend just using uniform scale ticked like so so the last feature of the modifiers are the wiggles if we drop down the wiggle parameter here you'll see position is unique where it has X Y and Z wiggle and if you come to scale there's only the one wiggle and that's the same with rotation and opacity I'm just going to close these up quickly so there's the checkbox to enable your wiggle like so if this is turned off nothing will happen and if we go to the X wiggle here you'll see we've got frequency and amount and you have some advanced settings here which allow you to edit the complexity of the wiggle and the multiplier these are the default settings you don't often need to change them but they're there if you do and if I just quickly preview a bit of this wiggle you'll see the default is quite gentle and if we crank this up so I could go to 2 on the complexity and the multiplier I'll set that to 2 as well you'll see we get a much faster and a lot more variety in our wiggle I'm just going to put them back to the default quickly so it gives you a little bit of extra control uh, so what I'm going to do here is quickly add wiggles to the Y and the Z properties and I'm going to show you the new feature which are looping wiggles so if we open up the delay slash loop tag up the top here you'll see we have wiggle loops if we hit this drop down down you'll see we have another checkbox to enable wiggle loops so I'm going to turn this on and what this will do is you'll see we have loop length here this is currently set to 50 so what this means is every 50 frames it will create a perfect loop for within our wiggles so if I just come forward to 50 frames so this is 50 keyframes frames sorry not keyframes and if I hit preview you'll see now we have a perfect loop with our wiggle and if I disable this property you'll see it snaps when it goes back to the first frame like so. So if I wanted to extend this range I could set this to 100 and if I come forward to 4 seconds you'll see we we get more information within our wiggle before it is looped back to the start like so. Okay I'm gonna run you through some of the other features of easy clones so here I've got this clone system and I want to add this circle to it so I'm going to use the second button which is add clones this is exactly the same as it was before this will open up this dialogue and here it gives you a drop down of the clone systems that are in your active composition we only have one currently demo but if you were to click this it will list all of your clone systems if you had multiple and it asks you whether you want to center to the clone controller so in this case I do and I'll click OK so what you'll see is our clone, our shape layer has been renamed to Demo Clone 4. It's been given the color and it's taken the position in the grid which is defined by our space in here. So I'm going to add in one more row and I'm going to duplicate two more circles so we have three circles and three squares. 
Now say we wanted to randomize this order a bit, we can select our clone layers and we can hit the fourth button here which is shuffle. And when we hit this a couple of times you'll see in the bottom left here our clone layers are reordered. And when we're happy with the order we can select them all again and if we come to the third button which is renumber, when we click this you'll see our clones are now renumbered one, two, three to six again. And we now have two circles, two squares, a square and a circle. So we've changed our order of our clone layers. The next button is zeroing clones. So I'll demonstrate this via the animation. So what we'll do is we're gonna plot a keyframe here and we're just gonna move our shapes like so and we'll come forward a few frames and we will hit zero clones and what you'll see now is all of our positions snap back to the clone layer so we can create quick animations to the center and if we were to enable the delay the position delay you can see we now have the delay activated with this animation like so and I'm just going to turn this off again. The other feature is to remove colors. So currently in our clone system we've got these three colors. So for example I can just randomize our colors like so. And if we decide we actually need a fourth color we can come down to the what's that one two three four five six button and this will open up a dialog box and it asks you to select which clone system you want to edit and this gives you a new field here so we've currently got three let's say we wanted to add four if we change this to four you'll see we now have color four here and we could introduce a green like so and then we just need to find a seed that would give us all of our colors and again, if we decided actually we only need yellow and red, we could simply select two and remove the others out. Or we could just wrong button, remove all the colors altogether. And you'll see it got rid of the checkbox for the color delay as well. And we just have the easy clone effect and all of our shapes have gone back to being black. And again, we could add two colors back in and we get all the, the checkbox and the seed back like so. So that's how you can manipulate colors on the fly. Previously, that was once you built your system, it was locked. And that was a feature I constantly found rather annoying. Um, the other button here is for adding delay expressions and finally consistent stroke. Easy clones by default, if you build a clone system with a stroke layer, it will instantly make it so it is linked up to the consistent stroke width checkbox. However, in the instance, if you build a layer that doesn't have a stroke, so if I just come into this rectangle and remove the stroke, so this only has a fill currently and if I add it to our system <clears throat> and then later on if I decide to add a stroke and say we remove the fill just so you can see when I scale this you'll see our line gets thicker here so in this case, if we go and select this layer and just hold shift and hit the last button here, it will ask you which system you're looking to refer to again. And you hit OK and you can see now the stroke changes and it's being consistently kept thin instead of going thick. And if I untick this, you'll see how it changes like so. So holding shift and clicking this button will allow you to quickly add a stroke effect if it wasn't included. And the last property 
The last feature again is the delayed properties. So if I just on this square layer actually, we come to we'll go to round this. So here, if we have any property selected and we hit this button, it will ask you which clone system you want to refer to. So again, it's demo, we'll click OK. And now you'll see we have an expression placed on round, roundness and you can apply this to any property. And when you put some keyframes in, like so, you will get an animation which can be affected by the delay. So you'll see these keyframes here and our animation won't activate until it is satisfied by its index in the delay, like so. And of course, like Easy Clones always was, all of these modifiers are linked to wherever you place this clone control layer so if you affect the scale they all react and that's the same for rotation position and opacity so you have a lot more control over your your systems using easy clones 2.0